You're on the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. We're here every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, live. The rest of the time, we're just canned. Just sit over here. Over there, you come and get us anytime you want. I read this week that uh, celebrity singer Justin Bieber, who has just used his social media platform to talk about his faith, took to Instagram recently to share several guided prayers. He's sharing them with his 122 million Instagram followers. Do you know what guided prayers are, is? It's part of this whole reimagining re of Christianity. Now they're reimagining prayer. The video prayers that he's recommending are generally four to six minutes long. They're contemplative in style and they're led by Bieber's pastor, a man by the name of Judah Smith. Bieber first mentioned the prayers in a September post saying, here's a guided prayer. When you have a quiet moment, get into a comfortable position and listen. This is a prayer that Bieber wrote. He says, they've been helping me and I thought I would share. His most recent posts are brief, similarly encouraging his followers to get comfortable and enjoy. One of them focuses on Romans 8.28, a verse that reminds believers that nothing can separate us from the love of God. As we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, all of these things, anytime you're talking about the Bible and principles and all the rest of it, you have to be very careful to make sure you're doing that within the context and the background that they come in. Otherwise, you're lifting them out of their neighborhood and you're putting them in another neighborhood and making them fit. And they sound like they do, but they very well may not. Here's Romans chapter 8, verses 24 through 33. It says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Now this applies to all sorts of hopes, Christmas toys, as well as spiritual blessings. The passage goes on saying, likewise, meaning in the same vein, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our moral frailties, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Do you see the connection? It's God who searches the heart. It's the same God who knows the mind of the Holy Spirit. Why? Well, because He, the Holy Spirit, is God. The one who intercedes for the saints before the Father, and that according to the will of God. It is a very neat and efficient symbiosis. Paul goes on in Romans verse 28 saying, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We know all that, right? That whatever is good, God gives us. Us, we who love him, we who are the called according to his purpose, not our own. Does any of this raise questions for you? Paul says in verse 29, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brethren. Firstborn, we, following in his footsteps, 
Footsteps which took him to the cross. Footsteps that kept him in the center of God's will and God's purpose. Verse 30, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. There's a dynamic here. There's a progression here. And it says that God has predestined some to be saved. What are God's principles by which he would call this some? Well, they're known only to God. What we know is that God is calling out a body of believers for his own purpose and glory. And the basis? Whosoever will. Now, the phrase, whosoever will, is not in the Bible. <laughs> but this is the way people talk about it. When you see people who are not saved, they fall into two groups. They fall into a group that is, consists of those who have heard and yet are or have rejected that message. In the end, God says, all who will may come. The vast majority won't. Verse 31, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Well, the video in this effort starts with Pastor Judah reading the scriptures and leading viewers in reciting three statements pertaining to the scripture reference, Romans 8, 28. He then models meditative breathing, often used in the ancient practice of contemplative prayer. The video then shifts into an extended prayer. Pastor Judah saying, God, thank you, we are loved. We are loved not because of our own doing, our own earning or deserving, but because of who you are. You are love and you love us unconditionally and endlessly and we thank you for that. He then uses the imagery of music to talk about deep worship, saying God is the greatest artist of all time. At the same time, urging his listeners to put their hands in the air a common practice at concerts, and joining with all the created beings and all the creation itself in glorifying and honoring the Creator. In truth, we are doing the very thing we are created to do, he says. The video ends with the pastor thanking God for his majesty. God, we thank you right now. It is our privilege and our honor to think about you, to acknowledge you, and to worship you in this moment. You are big, you are wonderful. You are powerful. You are all-inspiring. In truth, you are beyond our description. We love being loved by you. And we love you because you first loved us. Thank you. Amen. According to Fox News, Smith and his wife Chelsea, co-leaders of Church Home in Los Angeles and Seattle, have launched the Church Home Global App 2.0 a redesigned app that now includes these guided prayers. Pastor Judah told Fox News, quote, we realize that people all over the world are looking for a more constant connection to God. Chelsea and I developed this practice together in order to give our members in prayer, being them, in order to guide our members in prayer, bring them inspiration, and help them better connect with God. It is especially timely for those during this holiday season who may be feeling lonely, pressured, anxious. We hope these prayers can bring them peace. His wife added that the prayer videos are designed to foster community and relationship. We know that prayer has tangible benefits, Pastor Chelsea said. It helps people gain perspective, have more clarity, and have the confidence to know they are being divinely guided. With guided prayers, we're marrying the prayer experience with a real focus on community and relationship. We believe that number, the number one way to make this method and technology effective is for it to inspire real connection to others. 
What these people are exporting is a technique, not a love relationship, not an intimate relationship with God through Christ, but a technique. You see, you and I and all who have come before us have been living without all this tangible benefit. It's a wonder we got this far. And all this perspective and clarity, not to mention the confidence to know that we are being divinely guided. It has made us weak, at least weaker spiritually, than those who do this. It's God 2.0, or salvation 2.0, or spiritual power 2.0 something more than the disciples had, that's for sure. And it's definitely more than you or I ever had. Should we buy into this? No, it's gobbledygook. Is that a word? It is just technique. Our Father in Heaven does not feature technique. He features relationship. When you repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, you get it. And when you get it, the door opens to prayer. The God of heaven now will listen to you, his child. We don't need all this other stuff. But it makes us feel better, doesn't it? makes us feel that we're really in touch with God. It's called a technique. Techniques are part and parcel of a different system. Not a godly system. A demonic system. No, they're not demon-possessed. And they're not advocating it. But what they are advocating is in that realm not in the biblical realm. Keep your eyes open. Pay attention. Be careful.